Hello. Good evening. I do thank you for tuning back in. And certainly, peace and blessings be upon you. From me to you, from poem praise to we're going to move right along in the extraordinary African Americans. I let you know the next in line is Garrett Augustus Morgan, an inventor during the time period of 1875 to 1963. Now, uh, let's see what Mr. Morgan invented or how many inventions can you count that he invented in this? Now on July 25th, 1916, more than 30 men employed by the Cleveland Waterworks Company were at work in tunnel number five, about 250 feet below Lake Erie. Suddenly, a violent explosion ripped through the area, trapping the men and filling the air with deadly gases. Rescue workers immediately arrived on the scene, but the dense smoke prevented them from entering the tunnel. As each minute passed, the chances of reaching the victims alive became more remote. Then, someone remembered that a man named Garrett Morgan had been demonstrating a new breathing device, our gas mask, and they contacted him. Earlier, Morgan's invention had won a grand prize at a New York safety and sanitation fair. No one had been interested in his device then, but they were interested now. Mm. As soon as Morgan was contacted, he and his brother Frank rushed to the tunnel entrance. Along with two other volunteers, they put on masks and entered the gas-filled tunnel. Filling their way in the dark, they search for the trapped workers. At the entrance to the tunnel, relatives and city officials waited. Would the gas mask work? Would their 20-minute 20 20-minute, 20 excuse me, air supply be enough? What if there were another explosion? Ten minutes later, Morgan and the volunteers appeared carrying the bodies of the unconscious workers. Their work had just begun. Now returning to the tunnel again and again, they brought 32 workers to safety. Morgan's res rescue, excuse me, mission made news nationwide. Suddenly, every fire department in the country wanted Garrett Morgan's gas mask. Orders poured in. Everyone was interested until they found out that Morgan was an African American. Mm, mm, mm. Then business declined. When Morgan promoted his invention in the South, he was forced to have a white man demonstrate how it worked 
while he pretended to be a Native American assistant. Still, Morgan continued to perfect his device. In 1917, the United States entered World War I. Thousands of American soldiers used his gas mask to protect themselves from the enemy's deadly chlorine gas. Morgan was born on a farm in Paris, Kentucky. He left home at 14 and moved to Cincinnati, Ohio, where he got a job as a handyman. Because he had only six years of schooling, he hired a tutor to help him with his grammar. In 1895, he moved again, this time to Cleveland, where he got a job as a sewing machine adjuster. Before long, Morgan had his own sewing machine repair business and eventually opened a tailor shop with 32 employees. In 1913, while working with a polish for sewing machine needles, Morgan discovered a process that could straighten hair. Mm. Realizing the discovery could make him rich he established the Morgan Hair Refining Company. He soon became wealthy. It is said Morgan was the first African-American man in Cleveland to own his own car. The car inspired another of Morgan's inventions, the three-way traffic light. Yes, the three-way traffic light. It was so successful that he sold the rights to the General Electric Company for $40,000. Concerned about how poorly African Americans were being treated, Morgan founded the Cleveland Call newspaper to improve coverage of African American affairs. In 1863, not 18, excuse me, because we are in the 1900s now, in 1963, the man whose gas mask had given the breath of life to thousands of people died. He was 88. Well, I certainly like to uh, thank you uh, for your attention. And were you able to count how many inventions he invented um, while I was reading? I certainly hope you did. And I'll let I'll give you a, a preview preview of who is going to be coming up next as our extraordinary African American is going to be William. Christopher Handy. He's a musician and a composer. During the time period of 1873 to 1958. So uh, stay tuned and I want you to be blessed until we uh, certainly speak again or until you tune back in to Poem Praise 2 and I guess I will.
be talking with you later. Okay, later, y'all.